Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another edition of Dynamics 365 Community AMA. Um, we are so happy to bring these Ask Me Anything sessions where we bring in uh, your product leaders and other key leaders from the Dynamics 365 organization to talk about their products, talk about the vision, strategy, and the roadmap of, of the product. And uh, these uh, are a great way for the community to ask questions from the leaders themselves and the pro product leaders, and also get a feel of what the vision is for a particular product. This is a recorded event, and um, and you are consenting by staying on, you're consenting that we can record this event and uh, your questions will be visible once we post this recording on the Dynamics 365 community. There will also be a survey at the end, which we would love you to um, basically fill out so we can keep on improving this uh, AMA session series that we bring for you. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Veli Lee. He is the principal group program manager for Customer Voice, Dynamics 365 Customer Voice. Uh, he is the product owner and uh, he has graciously agreed to come and talk about the product, of what its capabilities are, what the vision is, what the strategy is, and how you can use it to enable some of your scenarios that you might have. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to Bali. Thank you, Fawad. And thanks for having me. It's uh, it's uh, it's great to be um, with the community in this session to answer any questions. And uh, so far, we have been having a good um, participation in our community forums. A lot of uh, customers are posting questions, and MPP also sharing the tips and tricks. So I think that I definitely encourage you if you have not already visit the Customer Voice uh, community forum, and then you can uh, you can also get an update when we have released the new features. So, um, customer voice. Uh, so, what is the customer voice? So, uh, maybe some of you are new to the products. This is our um, products that uh, the the goal is to empower you, to enable you, to make it easy for you to understand your customer better, understand your employee better. I think that every time I talk to uh, customers and uh, and or any organization and ask them like uh, what's important for them, it's always. Uh, understanding the customers is always top of the of the mind for many of the uh, the uh, decision maker in the company because uh, you you will just not survive without you constantly be able to listen to the to the customers and asking them although that there is uh, the, in the in the, you know in in the area of AI where you can also get the sentiment from the social and maybe you can infer of what your customers are saying from how they use your product from your uh, from your usage telemetry, for example, uh, which which is fantastic. But sometimes uh, the most uh, the strongest signal for you to uh, from the customer is by asking them directly. There are some things that we just couldn't get some of the detail from the inferred signal. Um, and that's something that we can get by simply asking them, asking the customers. Then um, sending a survey is uh, a scalable way for you to be able to collect those feedback. Now, the key is that how do you make it easy? Because like any organization probably will say that, yes, uh, listening to the customers is, uh, is important, but not everyone doing it and I think that there are many reasons why and then it's just do not know how to start, maybe too expensive to start and it's our goal to democratize the customer feedback, the employee feedback so that anyone who uh, likes to collect it can do that easily. Uh, so that is the goal of the, uh, the customer voice. Now the way that we do that is that uh, a couple of things. One is that the, the goal of the customer voice is to um, just not focusing on collecting the data, but we go extend that into being able, helping you also to interpret this data and then also to perform follow-up actions. Like if there are customers that are unhappy, it's not enough to know that you have unhappy customers, but what do you do about it and how can you 
uh, be alerted, for example, when a customer is unhappy so that you can uh, you can follow up in timely manner. Because uh, following up in timely manner is very important if you, if you get back to the customers. And this is speaking of the experience, we ourselves collect a feedback from our customers through NPS. And what I found was that when we have a customers that are unhappy and they um, uh, they, 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 they give like a poor NPS question or they post some comments. And the, the more that we get back to the customers, they, they actually sometimes that uh, becomes a, a, a way for you to turn those customers who are at risk to maybe become a fan because uh, the fact that you are responding to the customers in timely manner, listen to them and reacting, responding to them, that shows that how much you care about the customers and that will turn uh, those customers into a fan. And in addition to being able to respond in timely manner, then of course that you also need to continuously monitor the performance of your customer satisfaction over time. So this is what uh, we are trying to uh, deliver to customer voice. And the good news is that um, we don't just develop everything on our own, but we are also leveraging other related Microsoft technologies. Uh, the, in, uh, when we uh, listen and when we interpret, we provide an out-of-the-box report, but it's, uh, it's not just uh, limited to what uh, we provided as an out-of-the-box report, but oftentimes you want to build a custom report, custom dashboard, and that's something that you can do it through, uh, uh, through Power BI because the data is integrated into the uh, Dataverse. Uh, from the Dataverse, you can integrate it with your other customer's data, like in Dynamics 365, for example, and then you can use AI to the, get an insight out, um, based on that feedback and then have used the Power Automate uh, to do the follow-up action uh, with your customers and using Power BI to also the monitor the, uh, the performance over time. So uh, let me give you a quick demo and then after my demo, then we can open up for, uh, for questions. Let me switch to my screen. So this is customer voice. Um, for those of you who have not uh, um, tried before, you can uh, you can go to ak.ms uh, customer voice, and this will take you to the our uh, marketing site where there are a lot of uh, good information here. And then if you uh, click get started, uh, and then if you already log on, uh, then we'll ask you to uh, sign up. And since I already signed up, then you'll be taken directly to uh, the product, to the customer voice, and or you can get back to it too by typing in customer voice at microsoft.com. You can also access the product by uh, going to this uh, app launcher menu in Microsoft 365, and you can uh, select this uh, customer voice. Once you uh, get into the customer voice uh, homepage, then you can click on uh, Get Started. And right out of the bat, uh, we present you with a sample template. So this is based on what we hear from the customers about some of the common scenarios where you want to collect a feedback from the customers, whether that's something about collecting a feedback periodically from your customers. Uh, some of the customers, for example, do quarterly survey or sometimes maybe every six months uh, survey to uh, their customers and uh, uh, like uh, their top customers or their B2B customers. Or sometimes um, you want to uh, send feedback as part of a transactional to send the feedback uh, when you uh, deliver your uh, product, for example, to the customers. When they receive uh, the product, the order is completed, then you uh, send a, a survey to ask them about uh, uh, what they think about the product. Or maybe you have the, uh, the uh, a field service uh, um, type of situation where you visit uh, to the customers, you install the product, or maybe do repair on the product and you want to uh, send a survey and um, and uh, and the last one in this row is uh, customer service or support. This is probably the most common uh, customer feedback scenario where every time your customers call you when uh, they're needing some help uh, and then you have this customer service system that maybe you can create a new case uh, and then when the case is resolved then you want to uh, send a follow-up uh, survey to make sure that the issue is indeed resolved and then they're happy with uh, with the service that uh, they receive from your customer service agent. Now, each of these templates, of course, has um, 
predefined questions. Uh, the periodic customer feedback, this is a template that we uh, collaborate, we were collaborating with the uh, Forrester Research. So some of these questions is based on the Forrester Research uh, CX uh, customer experience best practice. Um, and others, uh, it's uh, based on uh, what we uh, seen in terms of what are the top common things that uh, that customers asking about um, uh, in this uh, the specific scenarios. Now this template not only has the questions, but it also has workflow uh, that is uh, by default connected to Dynamics 365. So if you're using Dynamics 365 uh, customer service, then by using this template, uh, then not only we can automate sending the survey when the case is resolved in dynamics, but the result, the CSAT, is also the metrics that customer service use within the customer service application as well as the customer service inside. So it's all uh, integrated uh, if you choose this template. So let's do that. Uh, let's select this. So before I do that, then we are also start to uh, provide uh, more template. There is more industry specific, such as healthcare, and there are more coming up like uh, financial service and so on. So once you choose a template, then you uh, select the um, the data first uh, location. Uh, so. If you are using Dynamics uh, by choosing the same environment that uh, that you have your Dynamics, then this is essentially the glue that uh, uh, the uh, that uh, ties together the, the survey with your customer records. If you're not using Dynamics and um, a lot of our customers actually are not using Dynamics 365. Uh, then we provide the default uh, location uh, for you, which is the default the data first location. So all the data it flow back into your environment, either to Dynamics or to the default data first uh, that is that you own. Um, so that uh, if you need to build the reports out of it, you don't need to export the data from our service uh, in an uh, insert into your environment. This is already and the data already comes into the uh, the data database that within your uh, within your organization. So you select the uh, the dynamic instance in this case. Then behind the scene, then we create a project, which is uh, this is the, the the survey, and this is a starting um, uh, is this a starting point for you. You can um, you can you can customize the, the way that makes sense for your business. You can change the questions. You can add more questions. You can delete questions. Uh, but uh, all the, the, the basic template uh, have all the questions as well as all the um, all, all all the metrics, which I uh, will explain a little bit later. And this also has a personalization, and you can also do things like uh, uh, customize it further with uh, with the personalization. For example, uh, let's say that you want to personalize it further, and let's say that uh, when you send this the survey as uh, at the end of the uh, the case resolution, you maybe want to include the case title as part of the survey. So you can uh, add the personalization variable, and then you can insert it to anywhere in the survey that makes sense. So here, for example, you can insert it, um, customer service for uh, for your for this, and this case title will be replaced with an actual uh, title of the uh, the case. And I'll explain to you how you can populate a little bit later. And there are things like you can do with. Uh, 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 with uh, translating the, the survey in a different language. If you have customers that is in uh, in that speak in a different language, Spanish, uh, French, and, and what have you, then you can uh, you can create the variation of this. And then uh, we are uh, either detect the users when you send the survey, and then when the user open the survey, we detect the user browser language. And if you have the translation that match the language, and we we'll display that. Uh, version to the customers. Otherwise, you can also explicitly specify what language uh, to show to the customers when you send the survey. Uh, so those are some of the things that uh, that we support. Now, when it comes for you to send the survey, uh, you, you can uh, either do the automation or you can do an ad hoc. So for example, uh, by uh, going to like an ad hoc survey, let's, uh, let's say this is a periodic customer feedback, 
then you can, um, uh, we, uh, since you, in the beginning, I connect this uh, project to the, the dynamic instance, and this is the dynamic instance that this is connected to, so that I have a, a bunch of contacts in this uh, instance. I created also view uh, to segment my customers, like uh, this is my highly high value customers, for example. And uh, from this, then I can, uh, uh, I can uh, uh, look up directly the, uh, the, the custom view that I have in Dynamics. And uh, let's just look at that directly uh, what this is so that uh, I select these high value customers. Uh, this is the subject is AMA demo and then I send it simply by connecting to the environment, look up the customer records in Dynamics. So if you go back to this, and open up one of the uh, contacts in the um, in this view. Then, in a few seconds, you will see that those uh, survey is uh, automatically appear in the customer records in Dynamics. That's it. Zero code, zero configuration. Simply by choosing the same instance, choosing the customers uh, records in Dynamics, we automatically connect. And it's, uh, that's not all. But uh, uh, in a minute, I'll also show you that when you respond to this, this is also uh, the, the customer. Uh, uh, response is also directly uh, integrated into your custom records in Dynamics. Now, um, I'll show you one way to send the survey through by email. And the other things that you can do is that uh, if you, if, uh, we are using, as I mentioned earlier, that are you using Power Automate to do the workflow. So when you create this uh, this project from a template, then you can see in the modified uh, date that this um, workflow was created four minutes ago when you uh, select the project. So you can open this uh, workflow. You can see that this is uh, um, detecting when the case is resolved in Dynamics. And then since the case can be associated to uh, whether this is a context or account, then uh, if this is account, then we look at who is uh, the, the primary contact for the accounts and then send the survey to that uh, to that particular uh, contact. And if you expand this, and uh, earlier that I uh, added this case title as additional um, variable in the survey. So this is where, for example, I can pull the case title from, uh, from Dynamics and then save this. And then I can then turn on this workflow now that when you uh, resolve a case in dynamics this survey is automatically sent let's uh, take a look at quickly so you have a case um, i have uh, one uh, open case the product not received i will resolve this case Now in a few seconds, then the uh, the workflow it's uh, will detect that the case is resolved in uh, in Dynamics, and then it will start uh, uh, the trigger. And that is that now the workflow is running, and um, in a few seconds, then when it's uh, completed, then uh, let me switch to this. Uh, uh, this is from my previous demo. Let me just, uh, refresh this. In a few seconds, then we have uh, we will uh, the, these customers that will receive the uh, the email that uh, asking to fill out the survey, and then when you uh, when you fill out the survey, then the results will be uh, will appear in Dynamics. Let's see if we can refresh again. Waiting for this. Let me show you the. Um, so this is the some of the example where. Uh, let's see, I have the previous example where. Uh, 
you know the survey impact will uh, will comes into uh, into this, and then if and uh, the response they fill out, then the response will will also appear underneath. It's uh, the email system. It's uh, running a little bit uh, behind this morning, so let's give it a try one more time. Otherwise, we can uh, switch to another demo. This is from my previous demo. So let me just uh, show you what the uh, experience look like, uh, so that you can, uh, when you open the the survey, then it will launch the uh, the email. Uh, then you can fill out the survey. Um, whether you're satisfied or not satisfied. And then um, and then uh, submit uh, the response and this will goes into the um, into the uh, into the system. And for each of the customers, then uh, we let's say that you send a survey to 10 customers. Each of those 10 customers will get a unique uh, survey link so that we can track those, uh, those email as well as when they uh, respond by clicking those unique link, we know who responded to a survey without them needing to uh, authenticate to, uh, to, uh, to fill out the survey. And then those response will be uh, tied back to the, uh, to the relevant customer records in Dynamics. Now, let me show you what the report uh, looked like uh, in the, let me sh switch to, to completed uh, survey. So this is uh, an example of the survey with uh, some of the, uh, that there is already some response. So you can see that there is, um, uh, we have this outer box report that show you the NPS, for example, the percentage of the promoter, uh, detractor, and so on. So for each of the questions, we provide a summary. You can also see like who is responding. You can uh, check out what is their answer to each of the questions. Um, but uh, the the, uh, the other thing that uh, you can do is that this is example is actually from one of our real customers, uh, bank customers that send uh, a survey when uh, when their customers open a new account, as well as when the uh, customers that fill out the home loan. Now you within the within what we call a project in customer voice, you can create multiple survey. And within the project, you can also define what we call satisfaction metrics. Uh, so there are different types of uh, satisfaction metrics like NPS, CSAT. Uh, now for this, then you can then map them to the questions in your survey. And the benefit is that uh, for each of the satisfaction metrics, and we, uh, in addition to give you the survey report, that we also give you the satisfaction metric dashboard that uh, keep track on uh, what is your NPS uh, score uh, at the moment or whatever the, uh, the metrics that you choose, as well as the trend over time that you can uh, change the filter, uh, maybe the last seven days or last 28 days, as well as a filter for a specific survey. Because this uh, project has two survey, then you can compare your performance between now, uh, uh, between like a uh, different part of your uh, customer journey, like account opening and home loan, for example. Now, not only that you can uh, get the uh, the score and the trend. Uh, earlier, I mentioned about the importance for you to also follow up with your customers in timely manners. So you will also support alert. So for um, for each of those metrics, and you can define alert like uh, choose your metrics. For example, the overall NPS, and if you um, if you have an NPS then less than promoter, you set the metrics, and then you will get uh, you get notified when the customer is unhappy, so that you can uh, respond to the customers. We switch to another example where I have uh, something. So this is uh, this is where I receive an alert, for example, uh, and then for each of these alert, then you can. Uh, uh, you can see the reason why you get alerted, what is this customer score, you can open up the customer survey response. Um, if you have the customer insight, Dynamics 365 customer insight that uh, generate the 360 profile of the customers, uh, that uh, you can also 
via, uh, view the customer profile uh, directly in customer voice. And from this alert, then you can do a few things. You can assign this uh, alert to uh, maybe one of your colleague who needs to follow up with the customers, or you can also resolve this uh, saying that uh, maybe we um, uh, we send a fund uh, to the customer, and then you uh, you click resolve, and this will um, will then move the status of this alert from the open status into the resolve uh, status, and this uh, this. Uh, um, this alert is also uh, updated uh, into your uh, your customer records in Dynamics. So if you uh, if you go back to this um, to this, that you can see that there are some um, there's some uh, there's some alert that uh, uh, that alert that is uh, also uh, automatically added in the customer uh, records in Dynamics. Now. Uh, um, one last thing is that in addition to getting those uh, customer feedback reports in uh, customer voice and being able to see the response in uh, dynamics, you can, since the data is, uh, is, is saved into the data first that you own, then you can also build uh, Power BI reports uh, on these uh, customer feedback data in case if you need to customize it. So in the example of this um, uh, this particular customers that um, that uh, that has this uh, uh, built the uh, uh, send a survey for this for this bank survey, then they built a Power BI report that also tied the customer who provided feedback to the brands that they open account from, as well as the, uh, the brands has a different area. So they showed uh, what is the overall NPS, the satisfaction metric score on the top. And they can uh, also see this uh, score at the uh, area level, region level, as well as at each individual brand's level. Now, because of this Power BI, then you can uh, uh, you can visualize the results from other survey. Like uh, let me switch uh, quickly to the the survey. You can see that there is this different aspect they're asking in their survey questions. So this is uh, visualized in uh, yeah, through Power BI. And uh, the great thing is because of this Power BI, then you can do. Um, a filter, like I want to see the results from California, then you can uh, filter all the brands from California, show what's the NPS, and this is also filtered. So if you uh, uh, select a specific location, San Francisco, for example, you can see the uh, the key driver um, uh, score for uh, for San Francisco brands. And in the bottom, then uh, this, uh, this report shows also the details. And this is the this is uh, relatively easy to uh, to create. Um, I posted uh, a YouTube video, a tutorial on how to create this uh, report from scratch, uh, including also some of the template that uh, I published to uh, GitHub. Uh, so you can uh, you can also check out our uh, our customer voice video in YouTube uh, channel, uh, and then to get this uh, video tutorial for to build uh, this uh, this uh, this dashboard. So that is, uh, in a sense, the uh, what uh, what the customer voice is uh, end to end. Uh, maybe one other things that I would like to show, and then we can switch to the question and answer. Uh, we also have integration with the um, uh, with the uh, with the dynamic uh, 365 application like uh, customer service and uh, and uh, omni channel. So if you are using omni-channel for the customer service, uh, this is where you can set up a different uh, channel of uh, communication with your customers, maybe through chat uh, and so on. So you can uh, add those uh, widgets on your website so your customers can come in and maybe they can initiate the chat. And this is all uh, omni-channel experience. Now, as uh, an agent, then uh, hopefully I will get this. Uh, yes, I will get this uh, notification that there is a customer that needs uh, that wants to start. Then, uh, as an agent, then you can have this uh, communication with uh, with the customers. Now, um, what uh, when you configure this, you can also uh, set up uh, the 
the survey that associated with this chat experience, a customer voice survey, so that uh, you can choose that when the conversation ends, uh, then it's uh, automatically the customer voice survey will be shown to the customers at the end of the chat uh, experience. Now this is uh, this is our a, a one-time setup. As a matter of fact, let me show you what that setup looked like. So if I switch to the uh, to the admin uh, screen in the chat window, this is the chat widget, and there is a tab for survey, and then you choose which uh, to turn on this, and then select your survey. That's it, and then this uh, this survey will automatically shown uh, at the end of the conversation. And the nice thing about it is that then you can have uh, these uh, flexibilities, and then you can um, uh, the IT maybe can set it up uh, this uh, this widget, and then uh, set the select the survey, and then the business can own uh, the the uh, the survey. So in this case, let me. So this is uh, the the uh, the survey that is used uh, for this experience. So if you want to change the survey, uh, let's say that uh, for our customer survey in um, uh, uh, let's say just today. And uh, the business can change it at any time. And then the next time that uh, another users uh, initiate the chat. And then just uh, so that we can. Uh, I will just uh, immediately end this. And then we will just pick up whatever latest uh, the um, definition in the, in the survey so that the business can change the questions, add more questions, uh, then they don't need to contact IT. Uh, we always show uh, the latest uh, uh, survey definition as part of your uh, customer experience. Hi, Welly. Great presentation and great demo. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, let me um, go ahead and encourage those of you who are attending. You can submit questions into the chat for Welly. Um, we did have a couple submitted in advance, so I will start with those. Um, one of the questions that we received was um, how good a replacement is um, Dynamics customer voice for user voice? Do you have um, history with user voice? Uh, so user voice, um, I think that uh, the user voice, it's uh, it's typically, uh, uh, I think it's called uh, to collect some, uh, some, uh, some product ideas. Um, so it is slightly for different scenario where uh, you can ask for ideas and then the uh, people can uh, maybe vote on that ideas. Whereas in customer voice, this is more about a direct feedback to the customers. Uh, like we ask the specific customers, what is their feedback? The feedback is uh, tied back to the customer record so that you, uh, in uh, whereas in, uh, in user voice and ideas, then it is more like uh, uh, sometimes uh, it's anonymous or things that is not uh, directly tied to the customer records. Uh, you could uh, use this um, our forms uh, in customer voice. Uh, so let me, let me show you. So when in one of the um, the channel where you can uh, also uh, collect this uh, feedback is through uh, through the uh, through this embed mode where you can embed the survey in your website as part of inline or a pop up or a button where potentially you can submit your ideas uh, for the user voice as part of this. But uh, but you need to you need to do things like uh, the the vote tally and then being able to other people to vote on those idea. So the it's slightly uh, slightly targeting different scenario. You can use this to collect some more information and present that. But uh, for ideas specifically, uh, there are uh, other uh, uh, there are other application in dynamics that uh, that, that, that the templates uh, that is specifically to uh, to. Uh, uh, to be able to 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 meet the scenario of um, the product ideas. Um, we've got some new ones coming into um, chat. So we have um, oh, 
Well, someone asked, what is the link or name to the YouTube channel with the mentioned demo videos? And um, there is a YouTube channel, but it's also a great time to plug all of the new videos that Welly has provided our community. So when you visit the Dynamics community, you will look under resources and webinars, and there are a number of customer voice um, sh short video bites that give you um, key insights into features as well as the YouTube channel. And um, I'll go ahead and publish this question so we can share that YouTube channel out with everybody. We received one in advance for um, what differentiates customer voice with other survey tools in the marketplace? Okay. Um, so let me go back to the earlier slide that I have where um, I think that the thing I think the, the the I think the power of the customer voice is our integration with other Microsoft product. We don't use our proprietary uh, the uh, engine for to do workflow. We don't have our proprietary uh, the uh, functionalities for uh, reporting. Instead, then we are using Power Automate, we're using Power BI, we're using all other uh, technologies that you might be already familiar with it. And the reason why this is important is that uh, one of our customers, uh, they're using our, um, our competitor's product. And then uh, WETS is uh, highly customized. So every time that you need to make some changes and they want to expand their customer feedback program from the B2C to a B2B, then it requires a significant uh, effort to be able to uh, customize or create new instance of that, uh, that service and then uh, customize everything. Uh, so because of they are, uh, they need to have something that uh, they can put together very quickly. So they're looking for alternative and they found uh, customer voice. And and then they were able to put together uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the the system that is quite customized, but the difference is that they can they are able to do it on their own. They don't need to hire a consultant to put together the system, including the, uh, the workflow and the Power BI, because they already have in-house expertise that knows Power Automate, that knows Power BI, uh, so that the, um, in terms of the cost of ramp up is a very, um, very small because the survey creation is itself it's a pretty uh, pretty simple pretty intuitive you don't need to uh, to do a lot of training to be able to create survey with the automation uh, that will usually require a lot of work if you are using dynamics a lot of things that already taking care of you uh, simply just connect the dynamic instance and everything is already configured for you if you are using some other competitive product Connecting to Dynamics itself might take several weeks of integration work, whereas this is instant. And then on top of that, if you need to do additional things, then you can use your in-house expertise that knows Power BI, that knows Power Automate to be able to put uh, to put a, a highly customized system for you. Great, thank you. All right. Well. We have another one submitted in advance. Um, if you could tell us some of the new customer voice features for the April wave release. Okay, um, so that, uh, that's a good question. So this, uh, I one thing that I would like to share, let me go back to the presentation more, is, uh, is uh, for our uh, roadmap. Um, so this is not just for the April uh, wave, which is uh, which is something that we are currently working for uh, delivering this uh, functionality for next month, but also what is our roadmap for uh, for the next six months uh, to the October. And this is fresh from the oven. Uh, this is uh, you guys are the first to see this, and we haven't um, we haven't published this anywhere. Uh, so this is uh, this is a premiere of our uh, October wave uh, plan. So we in January we released a couple of uh, features, which is uh, uh, our the, what we call pause in the Zoom. So we, essentially, for your survey respondent to be able to start the survey, maybe on the mobile app, they click a survey and then they they not finish, and then they um, get back to their desktop and click the same link. It will pick up where the where the where they left off. And the conditional post survey message. Um, let me let me show you quickly. Um, 
So this is where, um, let's say that, uh, let's see if I have an example of this. Uh, sorry, I have a, okay, so I have this example where you have the uh, a survey and then um, at the end you you uh, you are display with a, with a thank you message so let me show you let's say that you answer this question so you hit submit and you have this uh, uh, this uh, post message now what we just uh, released last month is that the ability to conditionally uh, change the message depending on the user answer so in this case then you can set uh, another um, post message and uh, let's say that if your customer is unhappy about your service and the NPS is less than uh, seven, so you can uh, display this message instead. So in this case, then let's say that I answer less than seven. If I had submit, then you can say that oh, we're sorry about your service and we will contact you 24 hours. And this is tied to the alert functionality that I mentioned earlier. So this is already available to you. Uh, you can you can uh, use it right away. What is um, uh, what is coming in the next uh, few weeks? Um, um, I think before the end of the month is there are several improvement. The one that I'm particularly very excited about is this uh, custom header. Um, so uh, when you send a survey, then you want to make sure that your survey looks good and uh, maybe uh, also aligned to uh, to your brand. And um, in order to help you to do that, then we just uh, uh, we are working on this uh, ability for you to to customize uh, further the look and feel of your survey. So we already have the ability for you to customize the background image, but uh, the survey header is probably the most visible part of your survey. So there are a few things that you can do. Um, maybe if you are want to embed this in the, in the website, uh, then you want to turn the, the header off. Uh, but uh, if not, then you can also change the look and feel of the survey header. And we provide several uh, options for you, out of the box option for you to uh, uh, to use the uh, different style that, uh, that comes with uh, 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 with uh, with the custom voice, or in uh, in in all likelihood that you probably wants to uh, uh, select your uh, your own image. So let's say that you have uh, let me click on uh, an example where let's say that we want to use uh, this image. Uh, so you can choose your image and then uh, once you choose the image, then you can do things like uh, maybe change the the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the focus so that uh, yeah, when you uh, when we render the survey, uh, we'll make sure that whatever focus that you selected will be rendered uh, even when you are in uh, in a um, in the mobile uh, form factor where you have a smaller screen. Uh, the other thing that you can do, you can also like uh, change the uh, the placement of your uh, uh, survey header, uh, as well as also uh, add the logo. And then when you um, when you add the logo, then you can also control the uh, the, the location, the, the placement of the logo. You can uh, select whether you have a small, medium, or large, uh, and then also where is the logo is uh, is located. So we have this uh, this custom header flexibility. This is coming in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll be coming down to uh, some lists, uh, custom scoring. This is. Uh, um, or oh, actually, I skip this uh, personalized link. So personalized link is uh, the ability for you when you send the survey, then you can generate this uh, this uh, this link. Then you can share to uh, different people. But uh, then we also su support this uh, ability for you to create custom link, and this is tied to the um, to the personalization. So let's say that uh, I'll delete this. So let's say that you have an event like this, and you want to um, maybe have a different event ID and different day of that event happening. And then so when you uh, when you create the link and you can choose uh, the create uh, the custom link and then you can choose this available. What you, and then what you do is that you can have this combination like uh, uh, event, uh, event 101 for day one and then event for day two, 
uh, and so on. One, and then you uh, generate this uh, this link, so that each of this link, it's uh, it's uh, we are generating behind the scene. So each of these, uh, those variation, those, those different combination of the link, it's uh, tied to that uh, specific variable, so that uh, when they submit the response, that it automatically stamp with that variable. This is our uh, test environment, so I think that uh, we are still testing this, so it takes uh, uh, a little bit of a while for, but it should be uh, it should be coming up, uh, uh, then you can also export the link. Uh, so the the other things that uh, the custom scoring, uh, custom scoring, it's uh, uh, it's also um, the uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the top requested uh, features from our customers. Then I mentioned earlier that in uh, satisfaction metrics, then you can create a new metrics based on NPS, based on CSAT. Then we are adding a new support for custom score. So let's say that you have a survey that uh, have this NPS as well as you have some um, like uh, want to ask a specific aspect of your service. Uh, so in this case, then you can create uh, two uh, metrics. First is the NPS that tie to the NPS questions, and then you can then create another metric which is custom score uh, that this is your uh, the drivers. Uh, index, for example, and then you can map it to uh, multiple questions and then you can edit uh, this, uh, you can assign score to uh, what the, the response and then you can also assign weight. Uh, for example, you want to uh, give a bigger weight to the product delivery and you can choose what is the base score, uh, the final score, whether this is based out of 100 or one out of five or uh, uh, one out of 10. Uh, and then uh, once you do that, then we'll uh, display the score as part of your satisfaction matrix. Uh, just quickly going th uh, through this, this uh, external file upload, this is uh, being able to, for you to be able to send a survey that allow your respondent to attach files. Um, uh, we have support, uh, we have support this for internal survey and now we open up for, for external survey and uh, last is the survey reminder where you can set uh, an auto, uh, like uh, some days, for example, you can set three days. If you don't hear from your respondent, it automatically will send a reminder. Uh, before I go into October, any questions first? We don't have any new questions. Okay, I'll go on to the, uh, the October. Uh, so there are a few things that is in here. I think that uh, I won't go into too much detail, but I think uh, at, the, at the high level, our focus for October is two things, uh, or actually three things. Number one is the reporting. Uh, they are the, our reporting is uh, admittedly a little bit basic right now. We are improving in terms of uh, how we present uh, the information to you, both at the report summary as well as at the satisfaction metrics level. Uh, so we are going to add a few things to make it easier for you to get those insight. Uh, the first is uh, support for partial response. So not waiting until the respondent hit the submit button. So we also support uh, being able to collect partial response. So let's say your respondent start the survey uh, and then they haven't uh, finished the survey submit, but you want to capture what is it that they uh, they, uh, they, uh, they answer so far. Uh, a lot of times that you can design your survey so that the first maybe one or two questions is probably the, the most important uh, questions um, that you want to ask your uh, your customers. Like for example, in this um, in this uh, survey, then you ask uh, what is NPS, and then you ask some more detail about uh, different aspect of the survey, so maybe text questions. And let's say that your customers start with the NPS and they do not continue, and they have not hit the uh, submit. They just do like this, and then that's it, and then they forgot about this, or they do not submit. Uh, so the ability for you to be able to still capture, uh, for us to be able to capture and you uh, show it in the reports, and for you to be able to filter whether or not you want to include those parts. Response or just uh, the full response. 
text clustering. Uh, the comments, it's something that it's um, probably the most difficult to analyze uh, because if you have this feedback, open text comment, then what kind of insight then you can get from this, and especially if uh, they provide a lot of uh, uh, long uh, comments, how do you analyze, how do you uh, generate insight? So there are a few things that we are planning to do to help you to analyze the insight from text comments. First is to uh, the ability to auto translate, uh, especially in the uh, in multi language survey. This is very important, so that uh, if the response coming back, it's automatically translated into primary language, so that you don't need to learn and know all the different languages to know what the customer is saying about you. Second thing is that also being able to automatically group them. So we are planning to do the unsuper unsupervised learning where you don't need to do anything. By default, it will be uh, logically grouped based on similar topics. And then uh, and then we you also have the ability to uh, do the classification or supervised learning where you can provide examples of what are the tags that you want to apply to uh, to the comments and based on the example then we will uh, we will apply those examples to the rest of the comments. So those are uh, some improvements that is coming. The other thing is. Um, it's also uh, this uh, key driver analysis. And um, like uh, in, in this, for example, if you have this NPS survey and then you ask some more questions, uh, then uh, this, this, the way that the respondent answer this additional question might help you to explain whether they are happy or unhappy. Let's say that they are not happy with the service and this is the, how they answer the survey. And this is might uh, indicate that the reason why they are unhappy is because of the service delivery. So we will do this correlation analysis for you to uh, to uh, uh, so to help you to identify uh, the how they use the relationship between the, the key metrics and uh, and other questions in your survey. Um, and then the read only access. So right now you can share uh, the um, customer voice to uh, to groups or uh, then, but uh, the groups will have access to everything. So this will um, uh, they allow you to share the report only so that they, these uh, users that you're sharing, they will not be able to modify the survey, but uh, they will be able to see the insight that you get from the report. Uh, the, uh, the, the two um, management aspect. The first one is a departmental user allotment and reporting. So what this is, is that this is one of also uh, common asks from our customers that um, right now uh, the customer voice license model is based on the number survey response received. Um, and um, but then the question is that uh, for a bigger company, especially where sometimes the uh, the budget to uh, to get these uh, licenses coming from a different department, uh, so we will provide the ability for for you to be able to essentially. Um, break those the license that you purchase into a multiple allotment. So let's say that you purchase 10 license, then you can assign uh, maybe those two license to the marketing department, maybe five to the sales and then three to HR, for example. And then you can assign the uh, security group or the people who can access those allotments so that those people, when they created uh, the customer voice survey, they can uh, assign which allotment, uh, which essentially which uh, subscription the the, uh, the response should be uh, mapped to, and then we will uh, we will report accordingly. Uh, now, so this is uh, so the first theme is around reporting. The second theme is around the uh, the, the the management aspect to it, and the third th the third theme is around the uh, uh, the um, make. Uh, additional support for making a beautiful survey. So we start with the custom survey header of as part of April, we're going to add more features to give you more flexibility to have you to be uh, create a more engaging survey, not the text-based survey, image-based survey. 
um, as well as being able to style your survey other elements like button uh, and so on, uh, and, and then being able to then set a template or a team uh, library based on that so that as uh, an admin, then you can uh, define those uh, different style, the different header that uh, your, uh, uh, your people in your organization should use, publish it as a template so that anyone in your company, they can just select those team and that team will uh, apply to the survey that they created so that uh, the survey uh, will make sure that is aligned to your organization branding standard. So those are uh, some of the uh, themes around the uh, reporting. Reporting is probably the, the, the big part of our October investment. The, uh, the management aspect as well as to uh, additional support for uh, styling and uh, make uh, a beautiful survey. Wonderful. Thank you, Welly. Um, well, we've got about five minutes left, so I, I won't um, pose any additional questions. I will ask our attendees to go out and use customer voice to submit a survey um, and let them um, tell us what they thought about this event. And I'll turn it over to our community leader for WADCON. So Vali, thank you very much for coming and talking about Dynamics 365 customer voice. Really appreciate your time. Um, I also want to thank uh, a few other folks who were uh, helping us out. Uh, Alana and Emily, thank you for helping out with the community AMA. And uh, this is a great opportunity for the community to come and ask questions uh, from the product leads and leaders uh, themselves. Uh, thank you, Sonia and Daniel, for helping us with the background work uh, that make these AMAs possible. And, uh, and most of all, thank you, community, for uh, coming and getting engaged in the community and uh, attending these events to help us learn and grow together and also to provide feedback. Um, this, uh, this video rather will be available in the community for you through one of the community galleries. We'll post it uh, on LinkedIn. And while you are there, if you don't mind filling the survey for us, that would really help us improve any other AMAs that we are bringing. Uh, we do have uh, a schedule of AMAs. We are planning to have uh, supply chain management product uh, leader uh, coming and talking about uh, supply chain, Dynamics 365 supply chain management. And then we have uh, Dynamics 365 commerce lead also coming and talking about Dynamics 365 commerce uh, this month. So look forward to seeing you all back again. And um, Let's uh, continue to grow together in the community. Have a good day, everyone.